against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all these days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. The refrain, the Lord is my light and my salvation. For in the day of trouble, he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. The refrain, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. The refrain, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. The refrain, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Refrain, the Lord is my light and salvation. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of my adversaries, for false witness have risen against me, and also those who speak malice. The refrain, the Lord is my light and salvation. What if I had not believed that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. The refrain, the Lord is my light and salvation. A reading from Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
It's okay. Just, just, can you hear that? Can you hear, just have a seat for a moment. Can you hear that noise? I just, I'll be with you in just a minute. Just, I just hear something here. So here's the cause of that noise. It's something called Luke and Duke. I don't know if you've ever met Luke and Duke before. <laughs> Luke and Duke. This is Luke and this is Duke. And um, they, they want to tell you about something, about Lent today, don't you? So the kind of conversation went like this. What did you give up for Lent? Give up for Lent? Yeah, what did you give up for Lent? Do you supposed to give us something up for Lent? Yeah, give something up for Lent. Why? Well, when you give something up for Lent, it helps you to really focus on God and renew your relationship with God. It does? Yeah, it does. So what are you giving up for Lent? Blackberry jam. You don't like blackberry jam. You've got to give up something you like. Um, 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 raisin toast. You don't like raisin toast. You're supposed to give up something that you like for Lent. What are you going to give up? I don't know, help me. What about Mars bars? What about giving up Mars bars for Lent? Here, look. Look what I found in your lunch kit. <laughs> and you, I'll leave it over here, and we'll leave it over here for all of Lent. All of Lent? Yes, all of Lent. We'll leave it over there for all of Lent, and then on Easter Sunday we could open it up and have a big party. That's a long time. You manage, I'll help you, okay? What about um, something else you can give up? What about Dr. Pepper? No, never, I can't give up Dr. Pepper. No, I won't survive without my Dr. Pepper. Please, please don't. Dr. Pepper, you've got that in your lunch kit as well. <laughs> there you go, there's your Dr. Pepper. Please, no. Yes, you have to give up Dr. Pepper. We'll leave that over there as well. And that'll be part of the party on Easter Sunday. Are you ready for that? I don't think I can do it without your help. Well, come here. There's a hug. We'll do it together. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have a big party. Mars bars and Dr. Pepper. OK, we'll do it. Will it make me closer to God? Yes. You're really focusing, God. Let me tell you, during Lent, if you give up that stuff. OK, let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that during the season of Lent, we can focus on you, take our time to focus on your presence in our life and in our world. Help us to focus, help us to journey together and support one another through this Lent. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. And everybody said? Amen. And everybody said? Amen. You're getting better at that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the gospel in it. <laughs> He's still working on it. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll find out. <laughs> <I'm moving>. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus was teaching the people, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Say, hey, join with me in prayer. Your word, Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 
continue to give us light and guidance and direction as we seek to serve and follow you. For you are our light and our salvation. Amen. So, how many of you watched The Crown? Did you watch The Crown? Good. The Crown. The Crown, yeah. It was good. You get really involved in it. How many of you binged when you watched The Crown? <laughs> this is honesty time. Not just one, one, uh, once a week or once a day, but maybe three or four in an evening, right? That was really, you really get involved in that. How many of you fact-checked The Crown? When it was going, check and see if, yeah. Martha puts up her hand because she calls me the, the fact checker. When I'm watching television shows or movies, she'll go, check that and see if that actually happened. I don't know if that's true or not. Go ahead, check that up. And we're in a place now within our world where, sadly, we have to fact check all the time. You know, for us who grew up in the, the 60s and the 70s and then going through the 80s and then coming to the President of the United States being Barack Obama, and seeing Barack Obama, we thought that everything kind of went in a line, that the situation in our world improved and improved and improved and improved, and then the Donald came. <laughs> Donald Trump became the President of the United States. And we were fact-checking everything, because we never knew what was the truth, what was real, what was he making up. And, it was a, and we're still in that situation, because if we look at what's coming out of, of Russia at the moment, and the lies that are coming out of there, it's a challenge, not only a, on the West, but a challenge in the whole world, challenge on Russia as well. Is this another situation where there's lies after lies after lies? In this situation here, we, we're not told about these Pharisees, what they were up to. They come to see Jesus, and they say to Jesus, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Well, no, we all know that Herod wasn't a great guy, but are these Pharisees good, bad, honest, truthful, or are they just telling him a line to move him away from his vision and his mission? Last week we saw him dealing with the devil. Now, I, I really don't believe in a personification of the devil. I think there's evil in the world, and we're seeing that at the moment in Europe. But I don't believe there's somebody working around with a um, kind of pitchfork and horns on and all of that stuff, or what the movies produce the devil, somebody that throws up all this pea soup all over the place. Um, but there is evil in the world. Now it's funny with the Pharisees because especially in Luke's Gospel, you never know whose side they're on. You never know if the Pharisees are good or they're bad. There used to be a song we sang in, in Sunday school, I want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I want to be a sheep, ba ba ba. How many of you remember that? I want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't want to be a sad you see, because they're sad you see. I don't want to be a sad you see, because they're sad you see. I don't want to be a Pharisee, because they're not fair you see. They're not fair you see. And it's really hard for us, especially in Luke's Gospel, to get a hand. Are the Pharisees fair? Are they being honest here? What's their purpose in doing this? Are they trying to save Jesus? Or they're trying to thwart his ministry, his vision of why he's come to earth. It's because we know that some of the Pharisees did things that weren't right and were legalistic. But we know Christians are legalistic as well in certain cases. We know that that. But we also know from Luke's Gospel that Jesus spent a lot of time in the houses of Pharisees, eating with Pharisees, feasting with Pharisees. We also know that some Pharisees became disciples and started to follow Jesus. So we're kind of caught in that place. But it's like the world we live in. Are they doing this for our good? Or are they doing this for our ill? And it's hard for us to decide that. I, got, I went to Vancouver School of Theology 100 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> and I had a friend, he's a Presbyterian. And we would walk and we would go out into the community um, and just walk together and talk about things. And, and Doug Longstaff, his name, he's now the spiritual director for Vancouver General Hospital. And a few, a couple of years ago, he phoned me up when I was still bishop and he said, you know, we really want to bring together faith communities. Would you be part of that? Faith communities to look at the healthcare system. 
and when there's problems with the health care system, respond from a faith perspective to that health care system and what they're doing. So anyway, we brought that group together, Roman Catholics, Anglicans, United Church, Muslims, Hindus, and it worked, and it still works, looking at the healthcare system. So a couple of weeks ago, he phoned me up again, and he says, I'm thinking of bringing a group together um, because it's really hard in our day and age to know what truth is. Really hard to know what truth is. And this group will be from different faith communities to, to, to sit down and talk about what truth is and how we, how we navigate ourselves through situations where we're not really sure. Now, if the Pharisees, I figure, these Pharisees had come to Jesus and they came in their semi-trailers with their flags up, pumping their horns, then we would know how to handle them, wouldn't we? Jesus would probably have said, give your head a shake. Why don't you go and get a hobby or something to that effect? <laughs> But we find ourselves in situations where it's really hard to navigate through what is right and what is wrong. I want to share an example of what I think is reconciliation at its best. Because we hear about reconciliation all the time. And it's reconciliation at its best. And it comes from the north of Ireland. The north of Ireland. The part of Ireland that is still under the control of the colonial control of Great Britain has, as you know, Roman Catholics, generally speaking, who are Republicans, who want a united Ireland, and Orangemen, who want to stay loyal to Britain. Not all the Protestants in Northern Ireland want to stay loyal to Britain. Some of those Protestants want a, a republic, a united Ireland. I have to tell you, I come from a, an Orange family. I grew up in Scotland. My father played the big drum in the orange band. I pay, played the triangle in the orange band. <laughs> it wasn't a career move. <laughs> but what happened in Ireland was they managed through the Good Friday Agreement to bring both those groups together and other groups as well to sit down together because the basis of that reconciliation was not mediation. Mediation is when we sit down together and we come to an agreement together. But there was never going to be agreement in the north of Ireland. The Protestants were never going to accept the Republicans, and the Republicans were never going to accept the Protestants. There was never ever going to be that sense of, we agree with you. Not in our lifetime, maybe in a thousand years from now we, that would happen, but not in our lifetime. So reconciliation means living well with difference. Living well with difference. I might not agree with you. We might disagree vehemently with one another, but I can live well with you in that situation and support you and care for you, and you can do that for me. No, it's not the best, it's not a, a, a kind of solution that is a wonderful solution, it's still problems. But what they decided to do in Northern Ireland was, you can be Irish and carry an Irish passport. You can be British and carry a British passport. You can be, call yourself Northern Irish and be neither British or Irish. And they came to that agreement with, with that difference, they could live well together. Jesus brings together people of difference and he allows them to live well together. We've always been taught that if you don't believe this, it's the same as us, you don't believe this, then you're out. But if you believe that, then you're in. That's colonialism or globalization, where you have everything the same and nothing, the language is the same, the culture's the same, everything's the same. That's not what it means to be a Christian. God created culture. God created language. God wants us to live well together with our differences. The Tower of Babel is pointed out as an example of God giving us language as a punishment. The Tower of Babel tells us that God gave us language and culture as a gift. Difference, diversity is a gift from God and we should celebrate that. And in that difference and in that diversity, we should live well together. Support one another, even though we don't agree with one another. 
care for one another, even though we don't agree with one another. Celebrate the difference that is there. Jesus continues on with his ministry and his mission and is not thwarted, is not taken away from that. Our call is to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Our call is to share that good news of Jesus Christ wherever we find ourselves each and every day. Don't let folks separate us and divide us because we have difference. Celebrate that difference. Reconciliation is living well with difference. Join me in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your gift of diversity within the human family, for the languages, for the culture, for the traditions, for all that you have given to us. Help us to support one another, to learn from one another, and to care for one another, that we might live well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you are able, will you please stand and we'll say together the creed which is found in the bulletin. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond a safe place into action, into vulnerability, and onto the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change, to put ourselves on the line, to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation to stand with those on the edge, to choose life and be used by the Spirit for God's new community of God. Amen. Please sit on the for the prayers of the people for the second Sunday in Lent. To the phrase, most faithful Lord, please respond saying, hear our prayer. God of mercy, our souls stretch toward your eternal loving presence and patience. We give thanks that when we are lost in the darkness of life or immersed in seeking its treasure, you patiently wait for us to turn in your direction and rediscover our true selves in you. Most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, renew a right spirit of peace, justice, and humanity in us, and in all who lobby, legislate, and rule throughout this world, this country, and our community. We pray especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Premier, and all who shape the laws and programs in our local communities. Most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, restore the hope and wholeness of those who live with pain that divides them from themselves, including illness, addiction, isolation, homelessness, and redouble the compassion of all who give them care. We now join our voices to pray for those in need, and especially for the people in Ukraine. Most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, repair the heartfelt wounds of those who mourn, as all of heaven celebrates and rejoices at the arrival of those who died on earth and now live again for all eternity. Most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, listen as we offer you our other heartfelt intentions and petitions giving thanks for the many ways you guide and restore us to life through our prayers and encounters with you in each other. We pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation, their teachers and sponsors. Most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God of mercy, 
Strengthen and refresh us in the fellowship of faith and walk with those you have called to your service. We pray for our Primate Linda, our National Indigenous Bishop Mark, our Metropolitan Lynn, our Bishop Anna, and our Interim Priest in Charge, Logan. In our diocese, we pray for St. Columba Port Hardy and St. John Port Alice and their clergy, Christine. We pray for the Diocese of Kootenay and their Archbishop Lynn. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia, the most reverend Leonard Dawia, most faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of the lost and found, kindle our desire to reconcile ourselves in Christ as a new creation and spare us from all that we think we deserve. Grant us the willingness to seek, find, and above all, trust in your enduring embrace. We ask through Jesus our Savior and the Holy Spirit our Sanctifier, who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together let us say the covenant prayer. Gracious and merciful God, you called Abraham to leave his familiar place and go to a land he did not know. As we enter this journey, accept our thanks for the leadership of those who have gone before us to build this parish and to proclaim your healing word. You led the people of Israel from the bondage of their past into the difficult journey to freedom and new life. And you were their constant guide by day and by night. Be our guide in this interim time, through the anxieties and doubts, in times of success and in times of trial, when the way is clear and when confusion threatens. Grant us gentleness when dealing with each other, wisdom for the future, and love for all. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. In the books of alternative services, will you please turn to page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're able, will you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you.
is to turn number one, this time on page 193. God of wisdom, the delight of the eternal world, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guide us to your glory. We ask this in his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God. For you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us. But opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God our Almighty, have you and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things he fulfilled your gracious will. On a night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. On the top of page 211. And now as a sacred Christ has got it, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of the year. Save us from the time of time and deliver us from the For the kingdom and the power and the glory of God is now and forever. Page 213. Fraction is number 7. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit and die. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
say together the prayer after communion. Creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for being the of the which brings us to the of the Lord. Glory to God, whose power of working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask our mind. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ. The Creator's blessing be yours, encircling you round above you and within you. The Son's blessing be yours, the wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed you, to remind you. The Spirit's blessing be yours, the still small voice, the wind and the fire, to comfort you, to disturb you. And may my own blessing be yours, a blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of a friend. The blessing of the God who created you, the Son who has befriended you, and the Spirit who has gifted you be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.